Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It's a great day to worship the Lord, yes? yes? Absolutely. It's so good to see so many of you here on this, our second Sunday of Easter. Yay, yes? yes. Absolutely. The celebration continues. Um, uh, the announcements for today, I mainly have two. Um, one of them is that I have a couple of concerts that are on the calendar. One is on the 15th of April and the other is on the 24th of April. I'm looking for people to go with me. There's more information on my door. There's some information here in your bulletin, but um, please join me. I would really like to have like car loads, a caravan going. It would be fun. Um, another thing that um, is going on for our service is that um, luckily there is a, a flu going around, right? Anybody heard about that? Mm -hmm. Well, some people got to experience it this week, and it's mainly those headaches and aches and pains that are so bad. But we are going to not be chanting any of the liturgy. We're just going to be saying it to uh, kind of, you know, save the voice here and save the coughing. Okay? Okay. Um, are there any other announcements that need to come before the congregation? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, this is Tim, Tim, okay, Tim Benjamin's, Jesus know who, knows who it is. <laughs> okay, yes, Rose. Thank you. Any others? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Woohoo, we have snowbirds back. I just saw them. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> it's good to see you again. All right, if there are no other prayer requests or announcements, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with our prelude.
Christ is risen. risen Hallelujah. Please stand as we begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness on page 95. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray. O God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> A reading from Acts. When they had brought the apostles, they had them stand before the consul. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. We will intone Psalm 118, verses 14 to 29.
A reading from Revelation. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wait. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel comes to us today from John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judean authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite our young friends forward for the children's sermon. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Maddox. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So good to see you, gentlemen. Yeah. So... 
So, I don't know if you know this, but I'm going to ask a question. You guys that are new to this, I often do that, don't I, ladies? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So last week we talked about something called transformation. You remember this? Yeah. And you remember what it means? Right, it's transformed when something changes, right? Yeah. Okay, and we keep talking about this thing called resurrected. What on earth is that? Do you remember? Yes, ma'am? It means, I think it means. Oh, well, that's what happened to Jesus before he was resurrected. Yeah. He rose again. What do we mean he rose again? Do we mean he was sitting down and he stood up again? No. What happened? He was dead and then he rose. He was dead and God made him alive again. And we talked about something called an empty tomb. Is that true? I have a model of an empty tomb. You made one too? Yeah. Is it kind of dark inside there? Yeah. Yeah. Right. When the ladies came to put the spice on Jesus' body to anoint him, that's what you did when someone died. You anointed their bodies. So, yeah, I brought a little empty tomb there. And um, so both resurrected and transformation means the same thing. Thing that it means that something is changed completely. Now, um, we talked about butterflies. I promised some ladies here that someday I would show them my butterfly ring. So we've got to do that. See the three butterflies? Ah, that's one of my favorite symbols for resurrected Jesus. Is butterflies. You see, I got another one here. Mm-hmm. We've got one up on the cross. So when you see butterflies, you can think of the empty tomb, the resurrected Jesus, right? Okay, so that's all the introduction. I can't tell you any more about that. Now I have to tell you were you listening to the gospel I just read? Did you hear it? What about the doors? Did you hear anything about doors being locked? No. It was in there. I promise it was in there. The doors were locked. And who showed up? Jesus. Wow. Um, can you walk through a locked door? You can? I don't want to know this. I don't want to know. Please, please tell me you're not teaching it. Yeah. <laughs> a locked door? You can walk through it without unlocking it? No. Without unlocking it? That's not a very fancy lock then. Then that would be reversed. Oh, exactly. Exactly. That's what people were, were thinking. That Jesus was a ghost. He wasn't really raised up. You nailed it. Thank you. But what does Jesus do the first time he shows up? He breathes on the disciples. He gets right up in their faces and goes. (coughs) Ah, yeah, he says, receive the Holy Spirit. A ghost blow in someone's face. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> and then the second time he comes, Thomas says, But I didn't get to see him. I don't know. You guys are just pulling my leg. I think you're joking with me. Nope. And and so what happens for Thomas? He got, to see him. he got to see Jesus. And what does Jesus say? First thing. Hey Thomas, come over here. Put your hand on my I, close, in my, in my side. Put your hand in my side. Touch me. Touch my hands where the nails were. But 
Can you touch a ghost? No. No. You have to touch through it. I know, but that's not how it worked for Jesus because Jesus is not a ghost when he's resurrected. Jesus is just completely changed. He's like nothing any of us have seen or thought of before. He can walk through walls. He can breathe on people. He can be touched. Different than a ghost. Isn't that cool? I know. It did the disciples too. They were freaked out too. But, but, but that's the cool part about Jesus. He's different. Resurrected Jesus is different than anything we have ever known. And it does kind of freak us out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? That is one of the things Jesus wants everybody to know. That he is different than anybody else you've ever thought about or knew about. Jesus is different. He died for your sins and he was resurrected. He was changed completely so that you would know how much he loves you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being resurrected and transformed to show us your love. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up today. <coughs> Sorry? No. Um, you know what? There are treats up here for anybody that wants one. If you don't need one, you don't have to take it, but you're welcome. You're more than welcome. Thanks for coming up. Now, wait a minute. Yeah, just take mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not taking the bag. <laughs> Let's pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for this day and thank you for bringing us all to this house of worship. Thank you for continuing our celebration of the resurrected and risen Son, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for how many people know your love through this gospel. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. Amen. So the summer after high school, the rest of my family went out of town one weekend while I had to stay in town and work. And I worked two jobs. And one of them was waiting tables on the third shift. I often came home early in the morning absolutely exhausted and not thinking very clearly. So with all my family out of town, I came home early in the morning exhausted and not thinking and wanting only a bath before I went to bed. I didn't think anything about the bathroom door not shutting on the first try. But when I went to open the door, then I remembered. The bathroom door had somehow started locking itself from the outside. I was locked in. Nobody would come for me. Nobody would let me out. I was terrified. I ended up squeezing through the bathroom window, scraping myself on the bricks, and landing in the very scratchy bushes. I was clothed. I didn't mention that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. 
Well, after I scraped myself on the bricks and landed in the scratchy bushes, then I had to climb up on two stacked benches to jimmy open a kitchen window so I could get back into my locked house. That was a rough morning. I was scraped and sore and shaken up. Those two locked doors were a big problem for me. Locked doors are supposed to be a big problem for people who don't have keys. That's what a locked door is for, to keep the uninvited out. For the ten disciples in our gospel reading, that, that locked door was for protection. That first Easter evening, after hearing that Jesus was not laying dead in the tomb, the disciples are scared. They're scared that the Judean authorities will come for them, that they will come and accuse them of stealing the body or of being followers of Jesus. They're terrified that they will be arrested and killed. They are terrified. And unlike me, they want to be locked in. That locked door will be a big problem for the authorities if they come for them. And the disciples don't want uninvited guests. That's what locked doors are for. But that locked door is no problem for one uninvited guest. Somehow, Jesus appears. Somehow, the locked door doesn't stop Jesus. Somehow, the uninvited Jesus is standing among them. It turns out that there aren't any rooms or walls or locked doors that can keep Jesus out. And the ten disciples receive the gifts Jesus has brought, gifts of healing and love. The first gift Jesus brings them is peace. Peace be with you. Jesus says it three times. Times. Peace. Because they are terrified. Peace. Because their hearts are still troubled. Peace. Because they are feeling guilty for fleeing and sleeping and denying when Jesus needed them most. Peace. The second gift Jesus brings is purpose. These disciples who had followed Jesus for three years now have no leader to follow, no teacher to teach them. Their new purpose is clear. Jesus says it, I send you as the Father has sent me, I send you. Jesus had been sent to bring God's love to the world, and now Jesus is sending the disciples to do the same. The third gift that Jesus brings is power. Jesus stands toe-to-toe, nose-to-nose with the disciples and breathes on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. And this he follows up by giving them the power to forgive or retain sins. Locked doors. They are no problem for Jesus. The tomb was sealed with a large stone. Jesus had been locked in. After that terrifying death, that locked door was no problem for Jesus. The disciples hide behind the locked doors for fear of the authorities. After that terrifying death of Jesus, that locked door is no problem 
for Jesus. Locked doors are no problem for Jesus. He can get out and he can get in. And the gifts he gives, love and healing, peace, purpose, and power, those gifts are for you, too. I told you about the real physical locked doors that I had to deal with, but there are other locked doors we all have that are not physical. Many of us know that there are people, ourselves included, that have locked doors on our hearts. Many of us have good reason to keep those doors firmly locked. We fear and we're terrified and we protect ourselves by locking the doors to our hearts. We feel ashamed or guilty. We protect ourselves by locking the door to our hearts. Today, I remind you, locked doors are no problem for Jesus. Jesus bruised and beaten, wounded in his hands and side. Jesus came and stood among the disciples, even though the doors were locked. And Jesus gave them the gifts, the loving, healing gifts of peace, purpose, and power. The disciples could not lock Jesus out. And none of us can lock Jesus out of our hearts either. It doesn't matter how bruised or scraped or guilty or ashamed we feel. Jesus walks through the locked doors of our hearts to love us and to heal us and to be with us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
service continues on page 104 as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand if you're able. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, the one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. Rooted in the abundant life and love of Christ Jesus, we pray for the life of the church, the lives of the people in need, and the life of all creation. Holy God of resurrection, fill us with your Holy Spirit to announce the new life you give through Jesus Christ. Lead us to people who need to hear Good news. Hear us, O oh God. Breathe new life into all of creation. Send sun to warm and water to saturate yards, fields, and mountains. Set all things in order that abundance may come forth. Hear us, O oh God. Open paths for cooperation between nations to care for refugees, survivors of natural disaster, and people through living through war. Bless the efforts of peacemaking troops, diplomats, and relief organizations to foster peace in the world. Hear us, O oh God. Pour out your enduring mercy to strengthen those who persevere in difficult times. We think especially of those on our prayer list, of Marlene Brown, of the father-in-law, of Tim, of Tim. Guide them to places where they may find shelter in your presence. Hear us, O oh God. Gather together the various gifts of this community and unite us in praise. Harmonize the sound and movement of instruments, voices, hands, feet, and bodies. Hear us, O oh God. You have united yourself with the saints at rest through Jesus Christ, the firstborn of the dead. Join us all together in his resurrection on the last day. And let the promise of this joining together comfort the family of Jeff Routson and the family of Alan Patterson. Hear us, O oh God. We deliver all this into your care, O oh God, trusting in the work of your Holy Spirit to bring all things into the risen life of our Christ of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please exchange that peace with one another.
And we pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated until the usher comes for you.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. we pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You'll find our sending song on the insert in your bulletin. is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.